Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today for the prior learning assessment webinar. Um, we're just waiting for a few more people, I think, to join. And then we'll get started. All right, I think everybody's um, in at this point. So um, welcome again. It's um, nice to have you here. Um, my name is uh, Dalila Omer Basic. I am, and that's my dog. <laughs> Her name is Una. Um, I am the um, coordinator for prior learning assessment here at SOPA. I'm also the program director um, and a professor of practice in the humanities and social sciences program. And then uh, today we also have um, Amanda Hassan um, and um, Sheila Gold, who are going to introduce themselves. Um, shortly. Hi, um, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Amanda Hassan, and I'm the Director of Academic Advising um, here at uh, the School of Professional Advancement. And um, I also advise for a few of our graduate programs here at SOPA, and I provide um, support to Dalila. So uh, anything that she needs. Um, I'm also the advisor for one of her uh, programs that she uh, is the, the um, program director for, but also for the credit for prior learning. Um, I support her with uh, the things that she needs for that as well. So I will turn it over to Sheila. Thanks, Amanda and Dalila. Hi, everyone. I'm Sheila Gold. I'm the Executive Director of Admissions for the Tulane School of Professional Advancement. And um, all applications for admissions come through my office. So I'm available to answer any questions. We'll talk a little bit about admissions towards the end of this webinar. Um, but I always like to tell students, if you have any questions or need any help navigating our admissions process, do not hesitate to reach out. I'd love to hear from students. So I'll talk to you all in um, a little bit. Thanks, Amanda and Sheila. Um, so Amanda is going to provide um, a bit of an overview about SOPA um, for those of you who are prospective students who are joining us today. Um, and then I will talk about the prior learning assessment process and how you can earn credit for your prior um, work experiences. And then um, Sheila is going to talk to you uh, a bit more about admissions. So um, I'll pass it over to Amanda. All right, thanks, Dalila. Um, so a little bit about uh, Tulane overall. Uh, obviously, Tulane was founded, you know, as the Medical College of Louisiana back in 1834. So very, very, very long ago. Um, and just like uh, Tulane um, and how they kind of uh, evolved over time, uh, that's exactly what has, you know, happened with the School of Professional Advancement. Um, we have over 130 years of dedication to students. Uh, who are adult learners. Um, while we do have uh, a nice amount of traditional students that come as well, uh, but we have a lot of students who look to change their careers or look to be um, advanced in the careers that they are currently in. And so they come to Tulane, to SOPA, uh, to get that experience, that academic experience, so that they can um, evolve as well and they can grow um, just as they are with their careers and they grow with us, with, with uh, SOPA, with Tulane. And so uh, having that strong dedication to students um, who are adult learners, evolving over time from university college to continuing studies to now the School of Professional Advancement, because that's what we're doing. We're advancing you um, as a student so that you can uh, grow professionally. And um, Dalila is going to talk a bit more about the um, prior learning assessment, but just as an overview, um, as uh, students come to us, um, and because many of you are adult learners and have been working in prospective fields for so long, uh, you may come to us with uh, 10 years of experience, you know, maybe five years of experience, uh, 15 plus years of experience in specific areas. And so your expertise is what can kind of help you get ahead. So we can work with you on where your areas of expertise are and then identify uh, where your strengths are so that you can um, earn credits 
uh, that way. Um, and it's outside of the classroom and it's, you know, it, it's a it's a really great process. And we look at students who have not only just work experience, but uh, if you have like an extensive amount of community service or military uh, training as well, we can look at all of those things and then help you decide where you should start based on that. And so I do, you, are you ready to take over? Or do you want me to do this one too? I can take over. All right, I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Um, so um, as Amanda mentioned, um, um, so our prior learning assessment um, program at SOPA allows students to earn credit for your previous experiences. Um, so what this means for undergraduate students is that you can earn up to 24 credits through this process. Um, a total of 60 of your credits um, can come from prior learning, uh, prior learning courses or um, which include transfer courses. So um, if you are transferring in 60, 60 credits from um, a previous um, institution, um, that would be the maximum that you can transfer and then you wouldn't um, be eligible to earn um, credit through prior learning assessment. But if you have less than 60, then um, you, could, you would be eligible for this process. Um, prior learning credit does not count towards the school's residency requirement. Um, and also it may not be transferable to other divisions within Tulane. So um, if you're planning on transferring um, from SOPA to another um, school at Tulane, um, your transfer credits um, will be reevaluated again. Um, and um, your prior learning credits would also likely um, not transfer to, um, to another school. Um, and then SOPA graduate students can receive up to six prior learning credits um, through portfolio assessment only. Next slide. Um, so in addition to um, uh, portfolio assessment, um, students can earn credit by examination. This is for undergraduate students. Um, so you can earn credit through um, CLEP exams and DSST, uh, which are typically standardized tests that you can take um, uh, at various um, testing locations um, uh, in the area. Um, and these are often courses, um, introductory courses um, at the college level. So for example, um, introduction to accounting or um, introduction to um, uh, world history. Um, and these, um, uh, these credits can transfer in as um, credit by examination, which count towards your prior learning um, um, assessment uh, limits. Um, and then we also have language proficiency testing. So if you're proficient in a language other than English, um, you're able to um, test, um, receive credit for, um, for that language. So for example, if you um, speak Spanish and you haven't earned any credits um, in Spanish, you would be able to um, take a proficiency test at Tulane, uh, which at a certain level can be applied towards, um, uh, uh, towards your language. Um, uh, requirements, um, and also you could receive credit by examination on your transcript. But then today we're um, primarily going to talk about um, portfolio um, assessment as a form of prior learning assessment. And this is, um, this type of assessment is um, considering um, the work that you've acquired outside of, um, outside of uh, the classroom. Um, so for example, your professional experiences, any community experiences that you may have had, and how you can turn these experiences um, and this knowledge that you've acquired outside of the classroom um, into college level credit. Um, so the, the first part of this process is to meet with an advisor um, to identify which courses um, that SOPA offers you might already have experience in. Um, so for example, if you've worked in um, IT for 10 or 15 years, um, there might be courses um, in the IT program um, in which you can, you can receive credit through portfolio assessment based on your um, pre previous experiences. The next step would be to learn how to develop a portfolio. Um, so for um, both undergraduate and graduate students, we have um, uh, a, a 
preparation that that allows you to learn what are the what are the elements that you would need to include in your portfolio um, that you would submit for assessment. Um, for undergraduate students, it is a three credit course, and for graduate students, it is um, a, a self guided workshop. And then after you learn how to develop a portfolio, you would um, begin writing it. So you would write a portfolio narrative and then also provide any supplementary documents that support um, your narrative around certain experiences. And then uh, the last step is to submit your portfolio for assessment. Um, so once you've developed your narrative, once you've gathered all of your documents, um, the portfolio is submitted um, to a faculty member who will evaluate it um, and determine whether um, uh, the portfolio would be uh, recommended for credit. So let's talk about all of these steps in a little more detail. So for the undergraduate students, um, you would begin um, by enrolling in a portfolio development course. This course is um, offered in um, spring, summer, and fall. It is a three credit, on, uh, three credit course. It's offered online. Um, and it would fulfill your general elective requirements. The prerequisites are um, English 1010. So um, if you're um, just starting the semester, um, you would have you would need to take English 1010, uh, which is your, your introductory writing course uh, before enrolling in the portfolio development class. And then the other requirement is a 2.0 GPA. And the tuition for this class includes three portfolio assessments. So you're basically um, paying for three credits with the potential of earning um, 12 credits for that um, for the cost of that tuition. And then for graduate students, um, you would enroll in a self guided um, portfolio development course. So it's a um, it's also offered online. Um, but it doesn't um, it, 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 it's a non it's a non credit course. Um, and the cost is $1,000, which includes uh, one portfolio assessment. So the $1,000 includes both the workshop and then um, the cost of um, one assessment. And then additional assessments are $450. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to post them in chat. So how would you, um, how would you actually develop a portfolio? What, is, what does that process um, entail? So each portfolio is developed in alignment with the course that we offer at SOPA. Um, only courses in our applied programs are eligible and um, they are also courses that are, um, that are not eligible are any internships or classes with labs and then most of our humanities and um, social sciences courses as well. And um, the portfolio is basically a written narrative that includes supplementary documents. So, um, for example, it, I like to think about it as sort of a, a final paper that you might submit in, in a class. Um, so for undergraduate students, this might be about 15 to 25 pages. And for graduate students, it's about 20 to 30 pages. And this narrative has to demonstrate a mastery of each learning objective for a particular class. So for example, if, you, um, if you're preparing a portfolio for um, a class in information technology, that class is going to have um, a, a list of learning objectives um, that you would need to um, demonstrate prior knowledge of. So on the next slide, we have an example of what this might look like. Um, and we've had a lot of students because a lot of people um, have experience working in an office. Um, so there are some um, introductory courses in our information technology program that um, a lot of people have experience in, um, even if they're not necessarily working in information technology. So for example, um, internet collaboration is one of those courses. And you can see here a list of um, six learning objectives. So if you were to take this class, by the end of this class, by the end of the semester, you would have mastered these six um, learning objectives. And um, for somebody completing a portfolio in this, um, in this area, um, you would need to describe how your previous experiences have um, uh, prepared you to address each one of these objectives. 
So in your learning narrative um, for this portfolio, you would this you would start by um, defining elements of the internet, and you would you would write about um, maybe how you've learned about the different elements and how you might have used them um, in your in your professional experience, and then you would you would do that for each one of the objectives. And in order for um, for a portfolio to be recommended for credit, um, your learning narrative would have to address each one of these learning outcomes. So after you, you're done with your narrative, after you've um, gathered any supplementary documents, um, and these documents can include um, any um, certificates that you've received or um, presentations that you've prepared, or um, you can include videos of yourself performing certain tasks. So those would be attached um, to your learning narrative. Um, and then once they're submitted um, to a faculty member who teaches in this area, um, they're assessing um, the portfolios using a standardized rubric and um, they're evaluating them based on both content and style. Um, so as I mentioned um, before, the content would be evaluated based on those learning objectives. So um, if you demonstrate mastery of all of the learning objectives, and then also um, they will be looking um, uh, to, to see that the portfolio is well-written, that it follows um, formatting guidelines and style guidelines. Um, which would then um, comprise the final score for the portfolio. And a passing score um, on the portfolio would re um, result in credit for that course. So um, in the case of uh, internet collaboration, that class would then show up on your transcript um, with a grade that's, um, that just lists credit by examination. So you receive the three credits and um, a note that you've received credit through examination. Does anybody have any questions at this point about the process? I did want to mention real quick, Dalila, just a little bit more so that they um, know exactly like how the advisor can help them determine which is mm -hmm. in terms of if it's uh, worth it to do the transfer credits um, and mix it with um, the credit for prior learning or choosing one over the other. Uh, so basically the advisor will go over your transcripts in depth. Uh, and then based on what, you know, either SOPA or other departments on Tulane's campus will approve um, for transfer credit for you, uh, will help us determine along with your areas of expertise you know, how many credits we would transfer in versus um, how much of credit for prior learning would be for you. Um, and a lot depends on to your program you decide to enroll in. So uh, just know that the advisor is going to help maximize the credits um, for you, whether it's transfer credits or, or the credits for prior learning. So just want to make sure that, um, that uh, you know that as well. Thank you, Amanda. I don't see any questions at this time, so I'll um, pass it over to Sheila to talk about um, uh, applications, and then um, if any questions um, come to mind, just post them in chat. Great. Thanks, Dalila and Amanda. So um, our application process is very simple and straightforward, although I always like to say to prospective students, questions do come up. Do not be shy, always reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions. Nothing is too big or too small. Um, our application is an electronic application. It lives on our website. Um, the address to that website is at the bottom of the screen, sopa.tulane.edu. When you go to our homepage, there's a big button at the top that says apply. Go ahead and click that and it opens you up into our application portal. Um, we have an undergraduate application and a graduate application depending on on um, which program you're interested in applying to. Um, there is a $40 application fee for undergraduate and a $50 for graduate. However, 
as a thank you to you for attending this webinar, we will automatically waive those fees. So um, just go ahead and submit your application and you should not even be sent to the screen that says pay your application fee. If for some reason you are, um, email us, do not pay that fee. Email us, we have um, captured your attendance today um, so that we know you've attended and we will go ahead and waive it, no questions asked. So um, please don't feel like you have to pay that fee. Um, we also require an image of a current um, government ID um, that usually for most people is just um, take your phone, take a picture of your driver's license or maybe your passport, upload that image to the application, and then we need transcripts from any school from which you've received college credit. Um, you can usually send those electronically from the registrar's offices of those schools. We get them in 24 to 48 hours if you send them electronically um, and then we just attach them to your application. Um, we also do not um, require a GRE for our graduate programs. Um, so we always or the or an SAT for our undergraduate programs. Um, we don't subscribe to the fact that um, standardized tests are necessarily very good indicators of performance in higher education programs. So do not feel like you need um, to send us that information. Information. Um, so that's sort of um, what we need for some of our graduate programs. There's a written statement um, that you'll have to submit. And for some of our graduate programs, there may be um, a requirement to upload your resume. That's program to program specific, and you'll see that within those applications. Um, and then um, we have some application deadlines that we like to let prospective students know about. Um, we are still accepting applications for the summer semester. So if you're interested in starting this summer, which is in mid-May, um, our application deadline is May 1st. For those of you who are already applying or who feel like you could get your application in really quickly, go ahead and do it. Um, we do have an early enrollment scholarship for so for first time students who register for summer term by April 25th. So you still have a couple days. Um, you for undergraduate will get a $200 scholarship and for graduate will get a $500 scholarship. Um, for those of you who are interested in the fall term. Our fall deadline is August 1st, but we are accepting applications for fall now. And if you register for fall classes by June 1, you will also get the early enrollment scholarship. And then for those of you who would like to join us in the spring, our application deadline is January 1. Classes start mid-January. But if you get your application in and register for classes by December 1st, you also will receive the early enrollment scholarship. Those scholarships are automatically awarded to, to you. You will see um, either a $200 or $500 discount on your first semester's tuition, depending on if you're undergraduate or graduate. So go ahead and there's, there's no reason not to just get that money. Um, it's just a, an incentive for you to get things in and it helps us kind of process applications um, more quickly. Also, our applications um, are on a rolling basis. So as soon as you get a completed application into us, we read it, process it, and submit your um, admissions decision. Um, just a little information about our tuition. Um, for undergraduate students, our tuition rate for summer is $524 for per credit hour. And for graduate students, it's $1,078. The tuition is going to bump up a little bit in the fall to 576 per credit hour for undergraduates and 1,119 per credit hour for graduate students. The majority of our courses are three credit hours. Um, we do not very intentionally add very much additional to um, that tuition rate in terms of fees. Um, I always like to point that out to prospective students. Many schools if you add up tuition plus fees, it can almost double how much you pay a semester. We do not do that at SOPA. The vast majority of what you're going to pay, 95% or so, um, is going to be your tuition rate. And then we do have um, a few little fees, but it will not in any way double your rates. So keep that in mind when you're budgeting. Um, and we're very, we're very proud to be able to say that we do that. Um, even though um, we keep our tuition and fees at an attainable point, we certainly know that students um, do apply for financial aid. Um, we offer um, 
both um, federal grants and loans, you will need to fill out the FAFSA form. So go ahead and start that process. Um, do not wait to fill out the FAFSA until after you've been admitted. The FAFSA can take several weeks to complete. So my, my pro tip is to start it as soon as possible. Um, we're also very proudly a yellow ribbon school. So um, for any veterans, um, we, we are a veteran friendly school. Um, we also offer several 20% discounts for active duty military and veterans, active and retired public safety personnel. We also offer a 20% discount for any um, graduate student who received their bachelor's degree from a minority serving institution, an HBCU or a, his, um, a Hispanic serving institution or an indigenous um, person serving institution. So um, if that is you, 20% discount for our graduate programs and certificates. Um, and then to tie this all together to our credit for prior learning, um, Credit for prior learning is also a way that you save money. So if you are a graduate student and you don't have to sit, take six hours of courses, or if you're an undergraduate and you don't have to take 24 um, credit hours of courses, that's a significant saving and not only time, but also money. So we like to connect those dots for you as well. So I think that completes our slides. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we can answer those for you now. And you should also be, thanks so much, Sheila. Um, and you should also be able to unmute yourself if you wanted to ask a question. Um, Um, Delila and Amanda, I always like to let folks know um, sometimes, okay, Gregory has a question. All right, thanks, Gregory. How do you determine the grade for experience? Um, so um, do you mean like a, uh, a grade that you would receive uh, based on that? Um, so the, the you wouldn't actually receive a grade. So it's not, um, it's, it, it's not um, you know, an A, B or C type grade. Um, but it's basically, um, it's basically pass or fail. Um, but the way it shows up on your transcript is if you pass, it shows up as, um, I think it's CRE or CRF, um, that, um, CRE, I think, credit by examination. Um, so, and if you don't pass, then it just wouldn't show up on your transcript at all. And the way that it's determined, um, it's based on, um, the level of mastery um, of the learning outcomes. So um, if uh, a class has six learning outcomes, you would have to demonstrate that you um, have mastered each one of those through your professional experiences. And the way that we think about mastery is not that you know you have to be an absolute expert in all six. Um, you just have to um, be able to show that you are um, you know, well versed in, versed in each one of the areas um, um, a, 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 as if you had taken that class. Um, any other questions? I believe that my um, contact information was put into the chat, um, but if not, it's sgold at Tulane. Yes, I think it was. Um, sgold at Tulane.edu if you have any admissions and application questions. And of course, Delila's information is on the um, screen right now. So you could also email us. You have questions. an application questions. Um, it says, how can you apply if you plan on joining the military? And, and I can so, um, our, we do um, have application or we do have discounts for um, active duty military. Um, you can go ahead and um, apply. Um, we, we will need you um, to share proof that you're active duty. Um, and then of course, our many of our programs are online um, and um, we try to work with um, with students so that our classes can be flexible and accessible. So the application process is the same. If you're applying for the discount, we do have a discount form that you will need to submit so that you can get the 20% discount. 
And then the next question is, how do you determine if military experience equals um, for mastery? Um, so there are different ways that your military experience can apply. Um, so if you have a military um, transcript, um, we typically will accept um, up to 12 credits. And um, I think Amanda can maybe talk more about that, uh, but we can accept up to 12 credits um, in transfer credit from your uh, military um, transcript. Um, and that's at the undergraduate level. So the, the military, the 12 credits would be at the undergraduate level and it would be um, a full 12 credit for it, so it's not individualized. It's just it appears on your transcript as um, I, I forget what the code is, but it does satisfy 12 credits of the 120 credits that you would need to complete the degree. Um, at the graduate level, there are some um, ways of doing it, but it's more so uh, on a case by case and how we're able to apply it, which are some things that we're working on now. And there's also the possibility of doing a, um, a portfolio. Um, so if um, your military experience aligns with a course that's offered, um, it would generally be like in, home, in our Homeland Security program or in our information technology program. Um, if there is a class that, that directly corresponds to the experience that you've had, um, then you can do it, you can get credit through portfolio assessment um, that way. Um, there's a question about FAFSA. Is it too late to file for FAFSA for summer en enrollment? No, you can definitely file for it um, now still. Um, it does take a couple weeks, um, just like Sheila said, but yes, you can still fill out a FAFSA for the summer. Um, keep in mind if you decide if you're coming here for um, at minutes for summer, uh, you do have to fill out two different FAFSAs. So you have to fill out a FAFSA for um, if you're coming for summer for 21 year, and then you would also need to fill out another FAFSA for 21-22. So just remember that too, because it's really important to, um, to do both of them so that you're packaged for both. And I just wanted to also add if anybody would like to schedule um, a follow-up meeting to this webinar, you can um, send me an email. Um, you can see my email on the screen. That's Dalila at Tulane.edu. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to you more about um, uh, prior learning. Are there any other questions? Um, let me also just share, Dalila and Amanda, um, we will be sending everybody on this call um, a follow-up email, just thanking you, with a link to this recording. So um, if you have questions or if you have a friend or colleague who would be interested in this information but wasn't able to attend, feel free to share that um, with them as well. Awesome. Oh, one more question. Uh, will there be any Zoom meetings for undergraduates interested in the Department of Homeland Security in the near future? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So we'll, we'll have a few um, admissions webinars for the um, emergency and security studies programs and it'll cover both undergraduate uh, programs and graduate programs, as well as our four plus one. And if you want to email me, I didn't see who asked that question, but if you want to email me, um, I can get you um, the dates of those so that you can register for those webinars. So S Gold, S Gold at Tulane.edu. And I think we have one coming up. I think it's on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. I could be, but I'm pretty, I know there's one next week for sure. I'm Hello. sorry. Hello? 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 Hi. Hi, my hi. Name is, yeah. hi, I'm Rosemary. Um, I'm the one that actually asked the question. Um, I'm actually interested uh, for professional advancement at SOPA for the Department of Homeland Security in the, in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, side actually in New York City. And I actually asked a military question also. Okay. Um, and it piqued my interest. So I actually was supposed to, a little brief synopsis, go to um, 
New York City Tech, but with this unprecedented event of COVID, it led this array. So I'm, um, you know, kind of trying to push myself forward to say what is it that interests me and recommendations that I have gained. And one last question, I would like to know what are the GPA requirements now that we're already here touching on the subject, if you guys wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. I think Amanda probably or would know. Yeah, Amanda, do you want to do you want to jump in? So Ro Rosemary, um, I will get you if you'll email me, I'll get you the date so that you can sign up for the um, Oh, wait, there we go. Uh, next webinar for Homeland Security will be mid June. Okay. So we'll make sure that you get it invited to that. I'm sorry, I wanted to jump in with that, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, okay. no problem. Thank you. Um, at the undergraduate level, so um there's a few different factors so we if you have been to college before have some credits and you're looking to come to SOPA um we uh, make sure that we uh we look at everything so we look at your transcripts and we make sure you have a GPA where you pretty much you're in good standing so at your former institution you need a good standing so Traditionally, normally, you know, 2.0, or, but we look at, you know, obviously 2.5 or higher. Uh, and there's some other um, things that you can also be eligible for as well. So like there's other scholarships and things like that. And so having like a better GPA, if you have already attended college with all those, if not, we do, you know, we look at your high school. So um, in terms of, of acceptance there. So it just depends on, on, you know, where you're coming from. If you're coming straight from high school, whether it was a few years ago, or if you have some credit and attended or attempted at a, another institution. That, um, help answer your question, Rosemary. Oh, okay, great. All right. Awesome. That's awesome. Great. And then it looks like Tim is also interested in the ESS programs at the graduate level. Um, so you should be, um, as Sheila mentioned, you should be getting um, a follow up um, after this um, uh, webinar. Um, that I think should have a, a contact information in it as well. And then you can um, continue the conversation and ask any additional questions that you might have. We'll make sure you get invited. Yes. All right, any other questions? Doesn't look like it. Well, reach, reach out to us. We're happy to answer questions um, and um, make sure that y'all are invited to any events. Um, and, um, oh, recommendation letters. Yeah. Um, so um, you do not need letters of recommendation for our programs. You, there, there will be written statements, um, like, like short answer questions and sort of statements of why you're interested in attending the program. Um, and you may have to upload your resume, but there's no recommendation letters, Rosemary. Thank All you, right. ma'am. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us today. It was um, great to uh, meet you virtually and, and hear from you as well on your future plans. Um, I hope to um, see you again and talk to you soon um, and answer any other questions you might have about prior learning. Um, any questions you might have about humanities and social sciences programs, you can reach out to me as well. Um, and then, um, uh, feel free to get in touch with Sheila or Amanda um, about any admissions or advising questions. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.